Welcome to the Wizards of Ecom, your no-fluff playbook for online success. Each episode is fully packed with actionable tactics you can implement in your business right now. Take your life to a higher level and excel in your online success. It's time to work on you and your business. Let's do this. Welcome back to the Wizards of Ecom. My name is Carlos Alvarez. I'll be your host for the show. In today's episode, we have an exciting guest, Jeff Cohen, the Vice President of Marketing at Seller Labs and an Amazon expert. Jeff, welcome to the show. Hey, Carlos. Thanks for having me. I always love chatting Amazon and e-commerce with you. We had the coolest and I would say longest pre-show conversation that I've ever had on the podcast uh, right before this. So I feel like we're sufficiently warmed up. Yeah. And, it, you know, Unfortunately, it's probably not something we can actually share with everybody because we we got into some some things. But I always joke about that we should turn the mics on in the green room because that's where the where the great conversation happens. And it's probably going to lead to like two or three other podcasts that we'll end up recording based off of some ideas and and things that we're going to test, you know, or, or talking about testing and building community and things like that. So always great Absolutely. to catch up. Yeah, I'm stoked. Creative juices are flowing. Um, I've never asked you this, Jeff, the title VP, that's a huge title. How, what does that mean? What do you do as the VP at Seller Labs and how did you get that position? Yeah. um, So, you know, I started with Seller Labs almost six and a half, seven years ago. Uh, Brandon Chekets is the founder of Seller Labs. I actually hired him 15 years ago to be my programmer. So we've known each other for a while. He used to work for me. Then I worked for him. Over my time, I was employee number like four or five. I've had so many different titles. If you look it up, I've been called CEO. I've been called president. I've been called CMO. Um, As our business has grown, right? As we grew from this small little software company where everybody picked their own title to today, we're, uh, you know, one of the top third-party softwares in the space. We're working with tens of thousands of Amazon sellers. We actually are a multinational company now. So we own a company out of um, Russia that does e-commerce development, where we're, where we're building like Magento type websites. We have 150 employees. So now we have like a full structure. We've got middle management, all these other things that um, are kind of crazy to think about from like our start, you know, six years ago. So VP of marketing basically means I'm in charge of the whole marketing of the company, the product uh, price placement, all the all the P's that you think about with traditional marketing. So I'm bringing ideas back to the team in terms of where the product can go, where the gaps in the market are, um, how we develop our our go to market strategy, um, how we do our advertising and our promotions. So I take a lot of the things that we're doing as Amazon sellers to get our product out there, and I do it for Seller Labs. Sweet. You're also, I, the, you're also a, a very, very, like the whole Amazon expert title. I, I've heard you speak several times. I'm always one of those ones that's like nodding the head silently. Yes. Like, yes, this is true. Uh, I would say that I, I haven't heard you say anything in regards to Amazon advice that I disagreed with, which is rare in this space. First time we came close to it, and it's the topic of this was in a clubhouse and it was surrounding Amazon live video. I think, I think I was, ho- yeah, I was hosting the room. And the topic was basically, you know, tactics to succeed with Amazon live video. And I, you were talking and I didn't even see who was talking. Cause if you don't see the, the right. ring around the person and I was like, man, this person's like very contrarian. And so like what I'm talking about here, but some of the stuff you said made a ton of sense. And then you mentioned a, a potential blog. Can you say the title of what that was? Yeah, I haven't written, I haven't written it all yet, but I basically, I, you know, what I said to you, what I said in that podcast or in that clubhouse was, you know, Amazon sellers need to stop thinking about Amazon live as a way for them to grow their business. Amazon live is not designed for brands to be developing content. And I think that two years ago when Amazon live launched, it was directed specifically at brands. And I, and the idea was for brands to create this content and go live and, Amazon Live themselves even realized that brands can't do this and made a pivot about nine months ago to really focusing on influencers who have a business of developing content. And I think there are brands, there clearly are brands that have successfully figured out how to build Amazon Live channels that drive their business. But I think that it's in in its global sense, it's not something that I think I would put high on a list for Amazon sellers 
to do, but I would put high on the list for Amazon sellers to participate in. And I think that's, that's where I have a slightly different uh, mentality than I think what you were originally saying. And then I was like, well, I'll even prove it. Let's go get some people from Amazon live and let's hear what their philosophy is on live and where it's going and where the opportunity is. Um, and, and that just led us to, I guess, recording this podcast. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I've recorded two podcast episodes on this show that, that pretty much said, this is the way to do it. If you're a private label seller, like you need to emphasize like going live, but things change all the time. Um, I, I, I've actually struggled because I've been telling people in my group and everything. I was like, man, you need to go live. You're a private label seller. You need to focus on this, this is the next best thing. Cause we have succeeded at as private label sellers going live, but you bring up a phenomenal point, And that is the average person can't create that sort of content consistently and at scale. And if, I, I think what you meant is that if private label sellers put too much resources towards this, the rest of their business is going to go to hell. Yeah. I mean, you, first off, you, you own multiple brands. And so you're able to scale things because you're, you can develop a content team that is working on live. And during the day of eight hours, they might be doing two hours of three different pro programs, but sellers that have a single product or a single brand or a, a single family of products, it's very difficult for them to make the, the, the commitment of what's necessary to make live work. And, you know, I'll give you an example. During the early days, I connected the Amazon live team with uh, my friends at Vermont Teddy Bear. And it seemed like a great fit. Here's Vermont Teddy Bear. They can make some great content. But it was like Vermont Teddy Bear sat there and they test everything, right? They're, they're huge testers. Um, you're going to meet Liz at the, uh, at, at the Prosper show and you'll hear they're, they're very similar to you. They love testing everything that happens on Amazon. And they like, they set up a camera and they've got a little like bear medic room. And so they, you know, had a little show about how they repair the bears. And, but when it came down to it, it just wasn't entertaining, engaging content because all they were trying to do was sell, ultimately was sell bears. And I think that if you, if you move out of your product and you move into your category and you're making the commitment of developing content around your category you might, then you might be able to be successful at using Amazon live as a channel, but specifically looking at it just to drive your brand. It's very difficult because of the consistency that you need to build the audience, to make it worthwhile. 100% agree. I went from that clubhouse. It, it, it irked me for a while. And then I started writing out all of this you know, you know what I mean? Irked in a good way. Like I love yeah. being challenged on something and I'll totally like, look, we're here and I'm walking some of the stuff I'm saying back is, and I'm going to come out of this even better. Uh, but I, I, I went and itemized like all of the things that go into this from script, right? At the scale that I am, because technically you can turn on your phone and you can do it, right? But the script writing, the research, the, the tracking, the, the live calendar, everything that goes into a content thing is like, yeah, the average person doesn't know this. Like the average person is, you know, focused on getting and should be like their reviews, dialing in their, their pay-per-click advertising. Um, you mentioned something though, that sellers should not ignore Amazon live video and that there was an alternative to that. Can you explain what the differences are to someone that say, doesn't know how to go live on Amazon? Yeah. So one of the things I noticed on your clubhouse was everybody was saying, Hey, Carlos, can you send me your SOP? Hey, Carlos, can you send me your SOP? And you were, you were generous enough to, to say, yeah, you know, I'll, I got to clean it up and redact a few things, but I can, I can share it. And you've always been good about that in the community, but just because you have somebody's SOP doesn't mean you can implement it successfully. And so Depending on your product, your brand, and your category, you've got to make the decision of whether you make the commitment to content or you want to participate in content. And what I believe is that for most sellers, the way to be successful is to get their product placed into content, whether that be uh, TikTok or, or uh, Instagram or, um, or Amazon Live. In Amazon Live, if you watch most of the shows, right? If you watch most of the content on Amazon Live, Amazon Live is like a home shopping network, right? They have some people on there doing exercise shows and things like that. But what was really interesting 
when you and I sat down and talked to the people from Amazon about Amazon Live, they even told us Amazon Live works best if you have an external audience that you can drive into your Amazon Live, highlight the products or the content that you're doing and use that to drive the sales. And that's the missing component that a lot of Amazon sellers don't have. They don't have that external traffic. And Amazon Live by its general nature doesn't have a ton of traffic. If you just turn on the camera, you'll get some people, but you're not gonna get a ton of people. And so the people that have been uber successful on live are the ones who are taking their larger audience from the outside and bringing it into Amazon and then using that to drive. And so if you can connect with those influencers and get your products highlighted into theirs, you get that extra effect of their audience and then their endorsement of your product. And you're not having to worry about becoming the Amazon live content creator. And I think there's a couple of companies in the space that have tried to fulfill that role of basically allowing you to have product placement inside Amazon live. And you just have to kind of test which of these will ultimately work for your business. Do, do you recall any of the names of any of those solution providers? I always draw a blank. I do too. There's that one up in New York. Um, you know, we'll have something, it in the right? Notes. Yeah. We'll put it in the notes. Yeah. Um, so, so it seems like there may be three choices that somebody has like one of them. And, and for somebody just starting that again, does not have experience with content creation and video probably the better option for them is to connect with one of these companies that these service providers that we, we haven't, we don't know the name of, we don't recall the name of right now, but it'll be in the show notes. The other one, and this is where I find myself right now is I've successfully created, I've successfully scaled it, but I've dipped my toes now that I have the, the clearance to go live as an influencer uh, on the platform. Right. It's sexy. It's, it's powerful. Right. So let's talk about that, right? There's two, there's, there's two sides. You can go live as your brand or you can go live as an influencer. And when you go live as an influencer, you can actually like list the products that you're highlighting and then you get a commission for those sales. And you show up you're, you're, when you're talking about your video, your product on the video. Um, I, I feel like this may be a little unethical, but technically to, to give you an idea, I've gone live as an influencer and I targeted, and this was a, a relatively new product that could benefit from its competitors who are doing better and the traffic that they have. I added them to my carousel of products and I'm showing up on their product detail pages. Um, there's really no defense for them uh, against that. And I just spent more time talking about my product on that stream than I did theirs. Uh, and it translated into more sales than when I was going live as a private label seller. Yeah. So one of the products, so, so one of the products of the companies that I work with pretty close with is a, is a baking company and she's a content producer, right? She, she does a ton of content. She's worked with Yelp. She's worked with corporations and she's been testing live as an influencer and one day she did a, a whole thing around making crepes and she was shocked because she was like, oh my God, I sold 10 crepe pans. Like same thing. She was putting things into her carousel. And so again, if you go, if you, if you take the mentality of a brand and you try to go on there as a brand, you're singularly trying to sell what you do, but that might not be what engages the audience. If you take that step out and you go to the category level. So now I'm not going in as the baking brand. I'm going in as the baker. And now I'm just teaching you how to bake. All of a sudden I have interest in the crepe pan and on the crepe recipe and the crepe little thing you use to spread it out. And you're building your audience so that when you do come back the next time and you talk about your own product, you have more people there. Um, but you're not always just there trying to pitch, pitch, pitch. And that's what Amazon Live found. What Amazon Live found when they were just going the route of the brand is that it was basically just sellers going on there, going buy my product, buy my product, buy my product. And, and that just doesn't create good content. That's not what, what people want to see. It's not what you would want to see. And I think like what you bring up is a, is a great point about how do you get on your competitor's listings? Well, Go on as an influencer, add them, add them to your carousel, talk about the, the category in general, but highlight your product is the one that's, that's the main one to go after. 
but you have to go in as that influencer who's trying to develop content. Now, Amazon Live has developed a couple of features that I think will grow over time, right? So they have the follow feature, um, which I don't think does a lot of push notification right now, but eventually I think the push notification will get better to say, hey, Carlos is live, go watch him. Um, and I think that you'll also start to see the placement start to show up in more places in terms of replays. Right now, live doesn't really live beyond the live portal unless you're in the influencer piece and you're tagging the product. And one of the best lives I've seen, and I, I've mentioned the, this to you before, and we actually talked about how to build a show around this, right? Was what Lego did or what an influencer did with Legos on Black Friday. And so an influencer, I don't know if it was Legos or an influencer, but literally on Black Friday, there were two kids with a camera watching them build, I think it was a T fighter, just a Star Wars T fighter. And the amount of conversation, what are those kids building? Oh my God, I want that. Like, and it was showing up. I found it because it showed up on the Lego pages. And it just created this massive engagement of people trying to engage with the product, understanding what the product was, being excited about buying the particular product, um, that it was just kind of like mesmerizing. It was like watching, you know, like the, the you know, baby elephant at the zoo cam, right? <laughs> or something like that. That's all it was. It was just two kids building Legos. Yeah, that, that's genius. I'm imagining like the baking thing. I was going to mention it earlier, but I didn't know if you wanted to say it. So like with the baking thing, like having a live video and tagging in the carousel somebody, because I'm sure yours is like very exciting looking and very homey, but tagging something that's like watching paint dry, like, like Red Baron or Red Mills, what is it called? Like they just, they look like they haven't, like there's been nothing exciting added to this since like the thirties or something. Um, Kutek and like a lot of the other people in that, like, yeah, but it's, it's even like, it's it even go ans even go ancillary to it. It's like, um, if you don't want to even go after competitors, right. Go ancillary and say, okay, well, I'm talking, I'm teaching you how to bake a cake, but I'm going to, I'm going to go get the top five spatulas that have massive traffic. And I'm going to tag those along in here because I don't care what spatula you buy. I want to get the spatula traffic because if you like spatulas, you might like cakes. And if you like cakes, you'll like mine, right? And so you do have to be a little bit creative in terms of how you peel off this traffic. That's not what Amazon wants you to do. What Amazon ultimately wants you to do is take your huge uh, Instagram or TikTok influence and say, I'm going to be live on Amazon. Come over here to check it out. And I think that where this will go is more along the lines of where, we, where we've seen Asia, which is the wall of phones where you have you know, multiple phones set up at one time recording the same thing and it's being streamed to three or four or five um, or in China, what? It's 100, 150 different live online shopping programs um, at, at simultaneously. Yeah. And, and the other thing with what's going on in Asia is they're not doing 15 minute streams. Like I feel like people in the U S are not ready for that because we're talking 12, 24, 48 hour long streams. But, but notice, so, so we talked about clubhouse earlier and I don't know how much you've been following it or what, what and I'm sure we could do another whole podcast on it, but I've noticed people on podcasts doing that too. I'm sorry, on clubhouse doing that too. They're keeping their rooms open for 12, 24, 36, 48 hours. And they're just changing the moderators along the way to and teach and treating it like a media company. And that's, and that is what I think that is part of the future. Um, you and I were talking about like, well, wouldn't it be cool if we could build like a studio and Amazon live people could come in? Well, that's what you would want to build. You'd want to open up your stream and you, I mean, that think about television. That's what happens when you leave one TV show, they try to drag you into the next one, right? Like that, that, that's, that's why you get the tease in the last 10, in the last three minutes of, of your favorite episode, you get the tease for the next show because they want to get you to drag on to that next show. It's the reason why Netflix ends by showing you immediately they're giving you either the next episode or they're giving you what they believe is the recommendation of the next show you want to watch. So it only makes sense. That's how streaming works. And if you can tag those track, if you can 
drag those people along, you're going to get a bigger network effect in the long run if you're producing better content over time. Sure. So, so I, I feel like I didn't wrap this part up though. So you can go live as a private label seller, which you're new. We don't advise now. Unless you just have a ton of like your strong suit is creating content and YouTube channels and like all this other stuff, then sure. But even if you can, it makes sense to become an Amazon influencer and immediately get in line to be able to go live as an influencer. Yes. Third option is, you know, work with an agency that, which neither one of us, unfortunately at this time offer, but work with an agency that can get you on their stream in front of their crowd and tagging other, maybe not competitive, but complementary products. Are you familiar with that ladder? Like how that's structured, um, I mean, I've heard of, I've heard of a couple of models where they're charging a few hundred dollars, um, and they're guaranteeing you a certain number of placements over a certain period of time. I think that it's still very early on. Um, I will say that if you're going to do that, you have to have a promotional strategy that's tied to it. So think about it. If I could get my product on the today show, do I just want them to talk about Jeff's new product, or do I want them to talk about Jeff's new product? And here's a deal, right? I, like that's, that's going to be what pulls the people in. So think about like, if you're going to go the route of um, a paid placement, um, what type of deal can you offer that's going to drive people in? Now, one of the things, there's a couple of other little tidbits about live that we should mention. You can run social promotional coupons on live. And when you do that, they can actually only be available to the live people, which is kind of a cool feature. So only the people that are actually watching live at that time can get that coupon. When the replay occurs, that coupon drops off and it's not shown. So that's, that's one thing to consider. The other is to just run a general promotion during the live so that when they come to your site, there's a clippable coupon that, that, they, can, um, that, they, can, that they can use as well. Um, the other, and I don't know all the components of it. I think you know a little bit more about this than I do is that there's actually tiers of influencers. And I think as you, as you increase your influencer tier, you get a little more love from the algorithm, right? Yeah. And, and that's, that was, and that's still one of my, again, if you do not have experience creating content and going live, um, what I'm about to say is it's still going to cause you a lot of work and a lot. There's a big learning curve there. Um, so you should work with one of these agencies, but my, my angle, even if I was getting good results from working with an agency, since I can create content is I want to advance in those tiers. I don't want to help somebody else. I mean, not that I'm opposed to helping someone, you know what I mean? Like, right. That's where they're getting this stuff. And when you advance in those tiers, some of the things you get is free premier placement on the home page of Amazon. Right. If you get um, up high enough. Yeah. Yes. And, and it's not unrealistic. It's really the, the main drivers there are how often are you going live and the length of show. I imagine at some point there's going to be some, like how much are you selling? Right. But right now that's not, that's not even one of the biggest drivers. So if right. you're just going live for a long time, frequently, you're going to rapidly go up those ranks and tiers. Um, having that, I feel like is a, is a pretty powerful asset. It's almost like you have a, you know, a seven, eight o'clock placement on a specific TV station. Yep. Um, that's, that's good stuff. Yeah. I mean, that, that's, you know, one of the things we're testing with, with, with this baking brand is what's called OTT, which is placing ads on streaming, you know, services. Like you said, you know, think about the uh, ads that used to show up on network television late at night, where you could buy the long form ads. That's what you can do now with streaming services. And there's so many ad placements that are out there. But if you can, if you can build your momentum and you can build this, Amazon is giving you rewards. Now, the thing you have to figure out is does your product or your category or your brand tie into something that live does? So again, like if you're an exercise brand and you can have um, some um, um, personal trainers and you can go live with these personal trainers and you can be doing two, three hours of like 
personal training on live totally makes sense. Right. And so, but there's other, but if you're selling like dog brushes, like how much can you go live about dog brushes? And that's where we were saying at the products point, it doesn't make sense. If you're going up to like dog grooming and you're going in more of the category and you want to start creating videos on like how to groom your dog. Now you've taken the next, the next step up. And if you want to go, you know, I mean, I, I've never thought of this, but like, what if you just got like a room, like your room that you're in right now and you went live and it just literally was just showing you dogs all day. You, you know, I, I, I was still, I was thinking the same thing you are, but I was still on the gym. Like my mind went to, couldn't I convert and camera up a room with nothing but gym stuff and have my local CrossFit people teach, you know, how to properly do a deadlift and all this other stuff or my exercise bands or something like that. Yeah, if you, if you scheduled, if you, I mean like you, but, but it's like you said, like this is where it gets exciting and Amazon sellers want to do it, but it's a lot of work. You've got to schedule all that. You've got to make sure they come in. You've got to set up the equipment. You've got to stream it properly. You have to have somebody behind the camera who's answering questions and putting up the codes at the right time. So it's, it's, Amazon makes it sound simple, grab a camera, go live, but that, and that does work at the beginning, but Amazon live is not designed for going live for 10 minutes. You really, if you're not going to commit to a 45 minute to an hour show, I don't even know that live makes sense for you at all because it just takes time to build an audience and get people in and get them engaged um, and you just can't do that by going on live for, for five minutes, but, but all the lives are that way, right? Like even if you go live on like LinkedIn or you go live on somewhere else, you've got to give people a time, time to get in and see you, um, so that they can interact with you. Yeah. Scheduled lives would be huge. I'm still, my mind's still on like the workout thing. We just said, like my, my wife, she has these two content creators that, have these like 15, 20 minute, like fitness boot camps or something every morning. If that person decided to say, look, we do this and you could either pay or you could, you know, watch this for free and consume it on our Amazon live video stream. Um, this thing's pretty lucrative. I don't know. I, I'm, I'm jotting it down. I literally jotted this down, like as we're talking, but I, but the, it, but the thing that I want to stay focused on is that what we're talking about is building content creation streams which is a lot different than trying to build Amazon businesses. And Absolutely. I think that was, that was the whole point of like Amazon live is super cool. It's exciting. It's, it's like five years from now, we'll be like realizing we were at the infancy of something much bigger, but I don't see it today as the place for Amazon sellers to get the big bump for their business and their, in their brand. If you agree, on- especially if they're a solopreneur. Yes. Yeah. Which is what would you say? Like the vast majority of Amazon sellers are, are solopreneurs. Sure. I would say from a count perspective. Yes. I mean, as you get into the, the volume of sales perspective, no, but from a, a straight up count of sellers perspective, maybe they've got a couple of VAs that work for them, but most of them are doing a lot, 90% of the work on their own. I love it. Uh, Jeff, I, I want to be uh, respectful of your time. We, yeah. I guess it's like, this is a marathon, actually, as we had that awesome green room conversation. Uh, I think everybody knows how to get a hold of you, but can you just mention it for anyone that is hearing this for the hearing you for the first time? How can somebody reach you and talk more about this, learn more about Seller Labs and everything else you have going on? Yeah, so you can reach me at Jeff at SellerLabs.com. Uh, you can also go to SellerLabs.com. Um, Carlos and I say this all the time. Uh, look me up on LinkedIn, look me up on Facebook, reach out, say hi, tell me if you learned something from the podcast. Either nobody gets to this point of the podcast or they hear it, but they never take action. We're serious when we say that and we'll respond to you and we'll engage in conversation. So I'd love to hear your feedback. Tell me how you're doing with live or leave it in the notes below. Um, I, I love to be challenged and to be told that I'm doing something wrong. And I love to learn um, and find new ways to do it. It's it's led to three or four conversations between Carlos and I, where we've had an opportunity to, you know, build upon each other's knowledge of this and 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 hopefully build new ways of 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 doing it for ourselves. Well said. I approve that message. Before letting you go, the thing I ask everybody that is on the show is, what is your favorite book and why? Yeah. So um, I'm gonna go with I'm gonna go with uh, three. 
Um, nice. So I'm going to start with pulling the giving, a norm. I'm going to, I'm going to start with the giving tree um, just because I believe both you and I are givers. And in this world, you have to be a giver to ultimately receive um, one of my favorite books. I don't know how he's become controversial lately, but Dr. Seuss, Oh, the places you'll go. Um, I, it's something I, I, I constantly share with my kids because I think it's, it's that pure freedom of like the world is yours to take in, in whichever way you choose to take it. And then my, my number one favorite book, I'm, I'm truly biased is, is called front of the class. It's, it's actually my brother's autobiography. So in a, in a weird way, it's a story of my life through my brother's eyes. My brother grew up with Tourette syndrome, um, and he became a teacher, uh, the book is uh, an award-winning book. He was on Oprah. His book was turned into a, a movie. It's actually been produced now in three different countries. So there's a U.S. version that was done by Hallmark. Um, there was a, um, a a version done in um, Bollywood in India, which is actually kind of cool to see, like the Bollywood version. And they're currently filming uh, a Chinese version of the movie. So. Um, Front of the class. What's what's your brother's name? By Brad who? Cohen. Brad Cohen. Yeah, I have this thing where I purchase all of the books I haven't read um, or that I don't have on hand. So the Giving Tree I know is great. Um, I'm not sure about the Doctor Seuss or the places you go. So yeah, I'll go, grab it. Go for go for this one. Is uh, it on it, Amazon? Front of the class. On, it should it should be. It's it's a bit of a tearjerker. Um, all and, right. And, you know, because it's it's the story of a, of a of a kid who grew up with a, with a disability and had to overcome a lot to, to get to where he wanted to go. What's interesting about the book is that the book ends with my, around the time my brother graduates college, the movie ends at a different point in his life. So the movie actually speeds through the first seven or eight chapters of the book, but focuses on like the latter part of my brother's life. Whereas the book focuses a lot more on the early part. So they complement each other very well. I had no idea. Like I had no idea about this. I'm going to grab the book. I'm literally, this is gonna be the next thing I read. Front my, of the mom, class, my mom I'm, gets really upset when she realized she's like, how come those people don't know you have a brother? And I'm like, well, I, I mean, I don't like talk about my brother at conferences. I don't know. Actually, he was the first keynote speaker at resonate. So really um, the first year we did our, our resonate conference, he, he was, he was our first keynote speaker. And I don't think we've had a speaker ever rated as high. So after you read the book, when you want them on the podcast, we'll get that set up. I'm wondering in front of the class, cause I was like a problem child and they always had me at the front of the class. And it was like, I wonder if that's where the title comes from. Like it was so much like hands-on that it was like, let's sit them in the front. I'm going to read it. Don't, don't tell me. I'm, I'm going to read it. I was going to say, do you want the answer or I'll let no, you? No, no, no. I, I want to read it. I want to read it. Um, I'll tell you, I'll tell you, you know, my brother, my brother has Tourette syndrome. Um, and so the book is written at a, at a level that my brother would read because my brother hated reading because of his Tourette, he would read and then he would like tick and he'd have to like reread the page. So my brother said, I had to keep the book simple and I had to keep the book short because I had to read through the manuscript so many times that it, it, it took me hours to get through. Um, so, so it's, it's an easy it's read a, is what you're saying. What's that? So it's an easy read. It's an easy read. It's an easy read. Yeah. And he also wrote it for, for, for uh, kids, for junior high kids. So it's, it's written at a level um, because he wanted it ultimately to be a learning tool for, for kids in, high, in junior high. I am excited to read it. Yeah. I am excited to read it. I might add this to our, uh, to our book club discussions that we do. Like this will be good. Awesome. Well, appreciate you having me on. And if anybody yep. else reads it and wants to engage, let me know. And um, I, I always, always appreciate talking Amazon with you. Absolutely. Thank you so much for your time. And I'll talk to everybody next week. It was fun sharing this episode with you. If you found value in what you've heard, please show your love with a subscribe rate and a review of the show. Until next time.